Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, where today's topic we will be discussing a few things to consider when evaluating a network monitoring solution. My name is Kevin Jackson. I am the Technical Solutions Consultant at Help Systems. And just a little bit about Help Systems. Uh, Help Systems is a global leader uh, in automation, monitoring, and security solutions. Uh, our portfolio comprises of uh, a lot of different uh, solutions to support operation, but it's not just limited to network operations. Uh, we can pretty much support solutions that, uh, uh, that provides um, uh, kind of help towards uh, the business, uh, business units or different business units uh, within your organization. Uh, so we kind of uh, have laid out our solutions in, in three tiers. We have our automation uh, functionality. Uh, we have our informative um, kind of tier where we are able to manage uh, large amounts of data. And then we have our security solutions that provide uh, secure FTP and other secure uh, solutions uh, within your organization. So our agenda today, uh, we'll take a look at uh, why uh, we want to look for a network monitoring solution. Uh, we'll kind of look at some of the things to consider when you're switching solutions or, or moving from one solution to, to another. Some of the things to consider uh, when in the market of uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, looking at different solutions and, and different um, functions and features that might help you in your day to day. And then we'll kind of take a, a little look at our solution, the Intermapper solution, a live demo if we have to uh, some time to, to provide that. And if you have any questions, uh, please send those questions uh, within the QA uh, section. Uh, and if we have time, we'll try to answer those questions. If not, I'll get to those questions as soon as I can thereafter. So what do we want to look for, for uh, uh, in terms of a network um, solution? And some of the things to consider. So why are we looking for a network solution uh, in, in the first place? A lot of times we want to kind of figure out what we need to do, uh, what we need to have in place to be able to find those problems when those problems uh, kind of arise. So these are just a few uh, kind of concepts to kind of take into consideration. So as, as a network professional, you know, we're, we're essentially judged based on the time it takes to find and solve issues when they arise. Uh, because costs essentially of downtime across industries can be great, causing major impacts to the business, we need to be able to find these, these issues and, and solve them as quickly as possible. So we need something that's going to provide us with some type of visibility where we can locate these problems quickly. And also, as your environment um, starts to grow and get a little bit more complex, it becomes very difficult to be able to identify where those issues are, but also be able to identify where uh, those devices are sitting. Oftentimes with complex uh, environments, new devices are all always kind of being introduced to the network. So we need to kind of keep an eye on those and start monitoring those as they are introduced. And then in terms of, uh, kind of meeting those performance needs, right? So we are in the business of supporting our stakeholders and we have to provide them with the best performance um, possible. So in order for us to be able to do that, we have to have a network that is robust and be able to find those issues before the users or the stakeholders themselves uh, start to identify those issues for us. So we need to have something in place to be able to mitigate those potential risks. So why would we look to switch uh, from existing network solutions to other solutions? So there's a lot of different uh, kind of ways to kind of go about looking at switching solutions. Um, we all know that the, the, the most important uh, switch or options to switch is always kind of going to come down to cost, right? Cost will always be a factor. And, and in, in most cases, IT, you know, we're tasked with creating diamonds out of cold, right? So it's necessary to, to find a solution that fits the same re requirements held by the existing solution, but kind of fits within our budget constraints if we have those budget constraints. So 
the current solution, uh, the, the price could be going up, uh, you know, depending on the, the, the vendor, maybe they, they're, you know, they're adding a cost to, to cover their back end. But, you know, also we're dealing with, you know, the, the budget constraints within the organization. So we have to find something that's going to fit within that, uh, those constraints. So oftentimes when those two things are, are not aligned, we have to look for uh, an alternative solution. Then we need to kind of figure out whether the existing solution has the necessary features that are able to support uh, our organization ongoing. So network visibility is always a big concern for most organization. And if the, the, the existing software doesn't provide uh, this network visibility, then you have to look at other solutions that does. So, you know, network visibility without a mapping front end becomes very difficult. If you're a small st staff or if you have a large network, not having that, that, uh, that feature uh, can be problematic going forward. And that kind of ties into the, the this third point is as the organization starts to grow, um, the current solution will need to be able to scale accordingly. And if that's not the case, then you have to be in the market for, to look at a solution that can provide that, uh, that coverage for you. And also, if you're, uh, if you're using some type of freeware software um, that might not suffice based on the growth of your organization or maybe compliance, uh, compliance needs uh, are prompting you to get something that's more robust or more commercialized. So what are the things to, to consider uh, when looking uh, for new uh, solutions in, in, the, in the space? Uh, first and foremost, we want to take a look at some of the product capabilities, right? So you want to be able to see your environment, not just the IT, but also just real-time functionality. So be able to have that overarching um, look uh, at your network at, at, as it stands, um, physical uh, layout, logical components, even down to the application side, being, a, being able to have that at a glance uh, function is, is paramount. And then how quickly can I identify new devices and auto discovery um, existing devices is also key. Again, depending on the size and scope of your network, being able to discover devices and, and figure out what exactly, as an IT professional, what exactly do you have uh, dominion over? What exactly are you, uh, you know, are you supposed to be managing? Um, and again, as new uh, environments are introduced or new uh, technologies introduced to your existing environment, you need to be able to adapt and identify those those new components and then add that into the into your kind of management uh, functionality. And then what kind of view of your network will you get? All right. So you can essentially create the views that you want. You want a solution that can help you uh, customize different types of visuals, different types of view, but at the same time have uh, an accurate depiction of how your environment is laid out. Ease of use is also very important. Um, you don't want a solution that takes you months and months to, to kind of figure out and, and deploy. You want a product that you can easily get installed, get up and running. You want a product that has the necessary documentation that you can get the training uh, and expertise uh, that you require to kind of deploy the product quickly and start uh, getting that information. Um, also, one thing that most folks uh, tend to neglect is what does it take to take a product from a trial to a production, right? So if you're looking at the whole trial process, you want a solution that if you install the trial and you're running this trial uh, for however long you're running the trial for, for you want to be able to convert that trial into a production um, uh, implementation without having to redo all the work that you have previously done. So some applications as just a matter of applying a license to support uh, the, the trial to production. Some applications you have to redeploy a different version of the product um, to be able to do all the, the necessary things and then you have to kind of do migrations. So it becomes very tedious and a lot of work to be able to kind of move from a trial to a production uh, function. So you want to kind of take heed uh, and make sure that that is a, uh, a simple process that doesn't take a lot of time. And then do you need that extra time uh, training and, and learning the product and understanding the product? How much time does it require to be able to do this? Uh, again, this is something that 
you know, most IT folks don't necessarily have the time to uh, to be able to uh, extend this training and understanding and learning of the product. They want to be able to understand and learn the product fairly quickly so they can deploy, get the product in uh, ingrained in their in their environment, and start getting that that information, that data, so they can you know see where things are uh, are happening and what needs to be done. So it's very important that the product is easy to train on and the services are provided that you can learn the product uh, fairly quickly. Now, this is obviously one of the most important things to consider uh, when switching solutions and also uh, very important things to consider when you're looking at the different capabilities of the product is the pricing. How is this product priced? Um, is the product price for everyday monitoring? Um, does the product scale in terms of as your, your environment gets larger or smaller? Um, how is the price affected? Um, so these are, are, are very important uh, components, especially for IT, where again, there's constraints, there's, there's, um, uh, you're, you're kind of working within uh, a particular budget, uh, you might not have enough to be able to support other uh, IT endeavors, so you kind of have to shoehorn this monitoring solution within, uh, within your overall operations. So pricing is very important to be able to, to kind of consider. And then most importantly, are you paying for the things that you don't need? Oftentimes, we we you know we like to look at um, the uh, the Ferraris um, and drive the Ferrari and, and use the Ferrari, but at the same time, do we really need that? You know, are we really using that Ferrari for for what we need um, internally? You know, are we spending uh, more than we need we we use the product for? So you have to kind of figure out. Features versus cost. The features that I'm proposed or, or I'm getting for this product, um, is it worth the, uh, the cost that I'm paying for this product? Right. So I don't want to spend, you know, 100% of the cost and use 5% of the features. I want to be able to use, you know, 100% of the features for 5% of the cost. So you want to be able to kind of, uh, you know, figure out whether the, you know, the, the cost and the features uh, line up, um, and then make your decision based on on that. So let's take a look at some of the other considerations uh, on the back end. Uh, also, you want to make sure that there is an active development pro pro kind of program or, or function within the organization. Um, if we take, for instance, uh, freeware um, software, we know that the freeware software are developed by a community. So once the community stop um, implementing and, and updating the, the software, that software becomes stale very difficult to maintain. You want to look at a software that has a, an active development program where you, you know the, the development team or the company is taking information from the customers in terms of how to improve the product, how to make the product better. We're getting taking feedback from the, the customers and then developing the product going forward. Making sure that the enhancements, uh, the features and the functions of the product are in line with current standards, are also in line with uh, new technology and you're moving the product forward. So it's very important that you have an active development program that can support this product going forward. And then what kind of support are you getting? Again, are you getting support from a community of, of developers who are, you know, basically uh, are, you know, part-time in terms of um, giving you feedback on, on the product that you're using? Or are you getting support uh, readily, readily getting support from uh, from the, the the business or from the organizations that's supporting you know that particular product. So very important to to, to note um, what kind of support you're getting and making sure that that support is in line with uh, with your agreements. And then is there someone or or a group of folks who are able to help you through the process? Um, the evaluation process is all, always um, a tedious process as you're always going through a number of different solutions and sometimes you don't have the time to spend on individual solutions uh, per se. So you want to be able to have someone who can propose and help you do in that process to, to essentially get the knowledge that you need and get the product deployed in a trial process, get it deployed as quickly as possible get the pertinent information that you need so you can make um, your decisions based on uh, both based on that output. So you want 
make sure that there's someone on the front end that you can uh, have conversations with, can can provide you demonstrations, can f uh, provide you with assistance um, and support to be able to help you through that trial process. So let's take a look at uh, Help Systems product, the Intermapper solution, and what our solution can essentially provide and, and how we can be considered uh, going forward. So what the Intermapper solution can provide for us is the ability to kind of give a full picture um, of your network. One of the things we pride ourselves on is the ability to provide uh, the mapping front end as a way to visually give you that network visibility that you're looking for. We're able to monitor pretty much anything with, with and everything with an IP. Uh, we can monitor outside of the the, the standard uh, kind of components that, you know, from a network perspective, we tend to kind of think about, but also go on to monitor those non-standard components as well. Things that we don't necessarily think about, things that sits within our our uh, our space, our data center. Uh, things like HVAC, env environmental sensors, door sensors, IP cameras, security systems. Again, things that are not considered core infrastructure, but are IP supported, but also sits within that space and are important to the core infrastructure itself. We're also able to give that live view of what's happening in your network um, real time at a glance. So you can see the areas of concern, you can see um, where, uh, you know, what's going on with your devices real time, and then you can use that information to, again, make those necessary mitigations if needed. And the, 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 the good thing about what we are able to do and what we're able to present is this is something that, uh, you know, if you're a level one technician all the way up to, you know, a senior level uh, person or personnel, you can take a look at a, one of our maps and see exactly what's going on there. You know, you don't necessarily have to be uh, an expert to, to kind of see where things are, are, are uh, their issues or, or, or devices are having some problems. And what we are able to present is we can get you up and running um, fairly quickly. Uh, with our full auto discovery function, you know, we're able to scan large uh, networks or subnets uh, fairly quickly. And you can start to see things kind of materialize and you can start to see devices and behaviors and get a instantaneous feedback on things you probably didn't know. And one of the things that uh, is also helpful is if you're also moving to a new position or, or moving to another company and, you know, for, for some reason there's not enough documentation and you're, you're kind of in the dark about what's going on within that network, a software like Intermapper can instantaneously provide you with that necessary feedback, give you some information about the environment where you can start building out your, your documentation and your maps. In terms of how we're priced, um, we are very simplistic in our pricing function. You know, we're device-based pricing, so you tell us how many devices you want to support, and that's what we uh, we, we price um, the model on. Um, so as your your organization grows, it becomes very easy to be able to uh, provide additional pricing or updated pricing to support that growth. And then we have that support. We have the front end support uh, in terms of our pre-sales who can guide you through uh, the trial process and, and, and help you kind of get the software up and running and get comfortable with the application. And then we have on the back end, we have our uh, support, our support staff, expert support staff that if there's issues that arise or if there's uh, you know comments or feedback that needs to be presented, uh, you can uh, get a human a human being on the phone or via email, and we can get that response back to you. We can get uh, those uh, those you know solutions mitigated uh, and kind of get you up and running. So these are some of the things that the, the Intermapper software uh, can provide for you going forward. So what we'll do is just take a live look at the product. What I'll do is kind of go through one of my uh, my maps and, and show some of the information that the software uh, can do, and then we'll come back. All right, so this is an example of my test network here in Eden Prairie. I have a number of different devices that I'm currently monitoring. So as you can see here, you can look at this map and, and again, you don't necessarily have to be a network uh, professional, but you can see some of the areas of concern. You can see the reds uh, on the map. You can see things that are blinking, 
So you can see where there's potential issues. I have some issues on my, my servers. I have issues on links that I'm monitoring on my network infrastructure. So again, what we're trying to present is that visibility into your, your organization, into your network, so you can see things at a glance. So this is my logical layer three diagram. Um, my main subnet is my 192.168 subnet. And again, I have some servers, uh, uh, some switches, firewalls, et cetera, that I'm monitoring. I'm also able to monitor some remote offices. Um, so I have a little bit of everything going on here. But what I can do is I can take a look at the, the statuses of my interfaces. So I can monitor interfaces. We can monitor traffic coming in on devices. Uh, we can monitor traffic going out of devices. We can monitor servers for application, application services. Um, we can monitor uh, application ports. So we're vendor agnostic, so it doesn't matter what uh, vendor uh, you're, you're using. Um, we're, again, IP supported uh, technology. So as long as it has an IP address, we can monitor um, your device. So what I wanna do quickly is just run a scan on just the network and just going to remove these devices. And then we can basically insert a device. We can run a scan based on the network. We can do uh, IP range. Um, but what I'll do is just run a quick scan on a subnet. And then what we'll do is once we run the scan on the subnet, we can start to build out uh, the, the map itself. So we are able to build out just a regular map. Okay. So if I right click and I go to scan network here, oh, one second, gotta make sure it's in edit mode. And then I can tell the software, I can do a full scan or I can uh, kind of uh, do different scans, look in different uh, places to get information like DNS, or we can just do an SNMP scan only. So we'll just run an SNMP scan. And in the map, we'll build out just a, a regular layer three map. So all the devices are going to be associated with a subnet. And then from here, we have uh, some formatting uh, features built in. So you can build out your topology. So we'll go with an organic topology. Then from here, uh, again, we have formatting um, features built into the product, so you can do background images, you can, uh, you know, utilize icons. So if I want to um, kind of change the way my my network is laid out, I like to use a wire, so I can use a wire, and I can move devices around. If I know what my device is, I can use one of my built-in icons, or I can upload my own icons and utilize that um, within my map. So here we have a bunch of switches here. You can start to see the, the network as it's kind of being laid out here and I can move things around. As I mentioned, we can make associations. We can, if we know two devices are, um, are related to each other, we can make attached to, so we can attach the devices. So again, you can start building out uh, your 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 network, your maps, and then inherent within the mapping function, we have performance monitoring as well, as I mentioned. So we can monitor the actual performances on the devices. We can monitor the performance on the interfaces. We can monitor performance on servers, uh, any kind of uh, uh, kind of component that supports IP technology going forward. And this is kind of what you need to do to build out your 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 kind of network visuals um, of your environment. And as you have new devices that are added to the to, to the to the network, you can essentially add and update your maps accordingly. So this allows you to have a living, breathing map that you can continue to monitor and then continue to to add and improve and update as you need it. All right. So that's just a basic demo of the software. And this is a Windows based, uh, Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. It can be installed on, so we are very flexible in terms of uh, the, what 
the software can be installed on as well. So at this stage in the game, um, we took, talked about some of the things that you need to kind of take into consideration in terms of um, looking at um, network monitoring solutions, some of the things to consider when uh, kind of uh, looking at existing solutions versus new solutions and some of the things to consider in terms of when you're kind of going through that, that process, what is most important in terms of making that final decision on, on, on where you need to be and where you need to go. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send those questions in the Q&A section. Um, I'll be more than happy to, to, to answer those questions at any time. And if you don't have any questions currently, uh, you can always reach out um, to us and uh, send us an email. Um, we can uh, answer those questions and get back to you as quickly as we can. All right, so if there's no questions, thank you again for joining me. I hope uh, this uh, this webinar uh, provided with you a, a little bit of information in terms of what some of the things to kind of take take into consideration when uh, when looking for and evaluating a network monitoring solution. Again, thank you again for your time and have a wonderful day.